It's time for a special 4th of July edition of Fireside Chats about your pet's health. Here to tell you about some of the things you need to be concerned about this 4th of July to make it safe and healthy for you and your pets is Dr. Brian Langlois of the Pennsylvania Veterinary Medical Association. Hi folks, Dr. Langlois here, back beside the fireside here at the PVMA headquarters in Hummelstown, PA. And I want to wish everybody a happy July 4th. Hope everybody's going to enjoy the uh, holiday weekend here. Uh, but we did want to talk a little bit quickly about just some of the hazards that can be going on with your pets around um, July 4th. And uh, as many of you may not be aware, actually July 4th is the biggest holiday when pets end up going missing and uh, or running away from home. Uh, and a lot of that is really due just to the fact of the severe number of fireworks and noises that are going off. It's the same thing as thunderstorm phobias that a lot of these dogs get. Um, can happen to cats too. In addition, we also have a lot of parties going on. So there's doors opening and closing, um, very easy ways for pets to get loose and uh, end up at shelters or, you know, loose out on the road, things of that nature. So. The first thing we're going to talk about a little bit here is just kind of the, the noise phobia that a lot of these animals go through. And there's some things that you can do to try to control it. If your dog or cat, in response to fireworks or to a thunderstorm or something like that, merely just goes and hides under the bed, hides in a closet, things of that nature, doesn't really become destructive, doesn't try to get out, doesn't try to tear at doors, things of that nature, that's okay. Because you have to think of it from the dog's perspective or the cat's perspective, which is, there's something really scary. If I go into this one place and say really quiet, it goes away. So there's no real need to worry about trying to pull them out, trying to snuggle them, cuddle them. That actually can increase their anxiety a little bit through the entire episode. So that's important to remember. However, if your dog does become, you know, the one that really tries to tear around, get loose, run away, things of that nature, get incredibly scared, you definitely do want to talk to your vet about certain things that maybe can help reduce that anxiety. And it used to be years ago that we focused on things more in the sedative realm. Um, one of the most common drugs out there that you can get from your vet is a drug called ACE Promazine or ACE. And that was really designed to sedate the dog so that you know the, the effects would not be as severe and they would just kind of sleep through things. What we found actually is that while they do get very sedated, the anxiety issue, the worry issue, really is not treated by those drugs. So the way we've gone now is what you would want to do, talk to your veterinarian about prescribing something like Xanax or things like that. Those are the types of drugs that actually have a calming effect and an anti-anxiety effect as well. So that's the most important thing to kind of remember. You want to make sure that you take care of your um, pet's anxiety as well as keeping them sedate. So that's really the big thing when it comes to, you know, the fireworks and the storm phobias. If you know that obviously fireworks are going to be going off at a certain time, you want to give these drugs maybe a half hour to an hour before, um, things of that nature. Obviously, there's other things that you can do. Uh, you know, if you do have parties with a lot of people, especially newer people coming in, uh, you know, that the animal may not be familiar with, it may be best just to try to keep that animal, uh, you know, away in a room by itself for a little while. You know, someplace where it feels comfortable and secure, nothing really to worry about, um, you know, where they will just stay calm, give them a new toy or something to chew on, things of that nature, and they should be all right. Uh, so that's an important thing to remember too. You really don't want them in and out and around uh, where doors can be open and closing, especially with cats who can dart out at a, at a moment's notice. So you want to be careful with that as well. Uh, the other big thing that happens uh, a lot of times, uh, obviously around the 4th of July, is barbecues, parties, things of that nature. With the barbecues comes all of the barbecued food that a lot of uh, people enjoy this time of year. You have to remember there are certain things that are dangerous to pets uh, when it comes to these outdoor barbecues. The first we're going to talk about is corn cobs. Everybody's, you know, corn on the cob, everybody loves it. However, the cob part of it, after you're done eating the corn, can be very, very dangerous to your dog. You really don't want them to get into this. You don't want to give them a piece of it because their bodies are not designed to be able to break down uh, the products that make up the cob. And what will happen is it will actually become lodged in their intestine and create an emergency surgery situation. So you want to remember, corn cobs definitely don't want to give them. Uh, and you want to make sure that your pet cannot have access to them at all. The other thing that we're going to talk about real quick is something that happens as a result of all of the nice barbecue ribs, uh, burgers, hot dogs, all of this stuff. Some of these higher fat content foods that we, feel we enjoy around the barbecue this time of year actually can cause a really serious life-threatening condition called pancreatitis, where the pancreas, which is responsible for producing a lot of the uh, 
both insulin that we use to regulate uh, blood sugar as well as enzymes to break down these, these uh, products of food, kind of goes into a hyperdrive. And what it does is it produces way too much, it gets inflamed, it can't really deal with it, and it actually creates a very, very serious condition that is very, very painful for your pet, uh, requires usually hospitalization with IV fluids, and you know, no food or water for a period of time to let the pancreas calm down. So again, you want to really avoid giving your dog anything of these higher fat content, these greasy content foods. Make sure they can't get in and raid the garbage in any way, because that can be a concern as well, that they can get into this stuff. One of the biggest signs of pancreatitis that we see is maybe a day later or something like that, you notice a lot of vomiting. Um, you know, the dog seems very, very uncomfortable, doesn't really want to lay down, may walk with a little bit of a hunched posture because it's really painful in their upper abdomen where their pancreas is located because of the inflammation. So that's really important to remember too. So those are kind of three tips. This has kind of been a shorter, uh, expedited version, if you will, of just things to worry about uh, to make sure your pet stays safe during the 4th of July holiday. I hope everybody has a great holiday, enjoys it with their pets. Uh, it should hopefully be nice weather in most places of the country. And always remember that if you have any other questions about uh, 4th of July safety protocols or concerns with your pets, you certainly can always visit your local veterinarian, call them up, you know, uh, give them a ring, ask them, as well as the PVMA also puts out a wonderful fact sheet. There'll be a link to that at the end of this video uh, that kind of goes over exactly all the things you have to worry about as far as 4th of July safety. So. Once again, this is uh, Dr. Langwa of the Pennsylvania Veterinary Medical Association wishing everybody a very happy, healthy, and safe 4th of July. Keep those pets safe, keep them indoors, hopefully they don't get lost, and as always, remember, if you have any questions, it's always important to take your pet to the vet, not the net. And we'll see you next time, right here by the fireside. As always, for more information, be sure to check out these websites, including PVMA's wonderful fact sheet on the 4th of July, or ask your vet. Remember, it's always better to take your pet to the vet, not the net.